Okay, so in this video, I'm going to show you how to install your pressure balance valve finishing trim, of course, with the tub spout and diverter and the rain shower overhead. Okay, so before we start doing this, um, let me just talk about the parts real quick. The Rehabel Pro system comes with a surface mounted plate and this gets screwed to the roughing valve that's in the wall and it has a gasket on the back that seals to the tile. Now depending on the tile condition, you may or may not want to use a silicone bead after you're done. A lot of times this sort of thing doesn't work if you're using a subway tile because there are inconsistencies with the surface texture and the grout lines. If it's a really large piece of stone and you're cut right down the middle, then this is plenty enough to seal it shut. So what you have to do is you want to take your long screw, they come really big, and put it into the, the wall and just slide your fingers on it until you know the surface. That's your surface depth that you have to put the screws into. And then you go look backwards until you see the next ring. All right. And this is a soft brass and you just take your side cutters. All right. And you just give them a shot like that. And that one's cut to fit. Again, just confirm that I did that right. There we go. Back to there. And use your side cutters. Okay. There we are. And now we have our plate. So we slide it over our valve trim. And we want to do this first before we add all the other pieces. Because we need the extra light going in there to find the holes. Okay. And just wiggle it around. And just put it finger tight for now. There we go. Okay, Whew, wonderful. Next thing you want to do is put on a glove <laughs> because these brass fittings that they make for these shower valves are very, very sharp. And find somewhere to put that that's not going to wreck anything. Take out the temporary test plug, throw that in the garbage. All right, so in this particular case, and you have to be really careful to check your instructions for all these things because every system is a little bit different. In this particular case, there is an extension that goes with the valve, probably because the valve body is made really deep from this particular manufacturer so that it can handle pressure balance, multi-port, plus a thermostatic valve. So this is just an extension of this valve here. So these two pieces will sit together, and then this end here with the gaskets and the pins will sit right in the cradle. So all you do is slide this stuff in, and there you go. Once you feel it sink into those two pins, you're good. All right. Now this is just the decorative chrome trim that goes over the brass fitting. There is a hole near the front and that goes on the bottom. That's in case any water gets into that valve and it has a way to drain that doesn't go in behind the wall. All right. Another good reason why when you're installing your valve in the wall, don't be afraid to install it just like one degree slope. That way, all the water that gets into that valve will drain out of the valve. Now, there's a gasket. There we go. We want to tighten up our screws. And just snug. Don't over tighten. It's just made of plastic and you'll destroy it. And then after that, you just set this on the name of the company, Rehabel. Goes at the bottom and you snap it in place. No screws, and if you ever need to remove it, you can just get a good hold of it and give it a good tug, and it'll pop off again. So here we are. I was so focused on making a video, I forgot the most important part. <laughs> just about to turn the water on, and my brain went, wait, you haven't put the... Yeah. Look at this. If I don't put this on first, the whole valve assembly is going to come firing across the room, wreck my silicone work, wreck my day. <laughs> now, here's a... Before you pull any tools out, check the manufacturer's instructions. These guys actually aren't a big fan of wrenches here, even though it's set up for it. They want you to go finger tight for a reason. Because they want to make sure that everything is lined up properly. And you can feel it. Okay? If you start using a wrench and it isn't lined up properly, you may not even notice it. There we go quarter turn is plenty. I happen to know from experience that that is going to work out great. Here 
Here we go. Oh, before we put the handle on, I gotta put this on again. We're doing this a little bit backwards, but this will still work. Okay. Here we go. Now the water's still off, so I can cheat. Get my set screw in there. <clears throat> okay, and then don't forget the cap, so that when you turn the water on, it doesn't get all wet. And it'll look pretty. Hot and cold, on off. That's simple. All right, we have our face plate, our handle, and our little set screw cover all in place, so we can leave that for now. Let's move on to the tub spout. Now, the tub spout, of course, is a, uh, let me just pull it out and I'll show you this unit. It should be a slip-on. Yes. Now, before I went and did the plumbing for this bathroom, I inquired with the company because I didn't have the finishing trim on hand, and they assured me that it was a slip-on. And so that's why I ran a half copper and put a test cap on it. And of course comes with its own Allen key, and that's the set screw for this. So you have to back this one off. You'll see it comes fully inserted. That'll drive you crazy trying to push that on the line. So just back that off until it's out of the way. And now it's ready to install. Okay, Get the handle. And we're just gonna take a little pipe cutter. Now, the slip-on starts here, and there's lots of room in that pipe all the way in. So you can see, we're good to go. So what I generally like to do is I like to cut it as far out as I can here, around three inches, in case you ever wanna change that to another system and you need to have the ability to, to solder on a male thread. Some of these fixtures that come, they have a threaded pipe in here. So this way, if I leave a little extra pipe and I've got to solder on a connection and do any other plumbing on another date, the option's there for somebody. If you cut too far back, it just makes it really difficult to fix it later. Not every company does everything the same way. So it's nice to leave yourself options when you're working. You'd be surprised when you're in this business how often you'll get a call from a client five, 10, or 15 years later and they want to just make one little modification or a couple of changes or even six weeks down the road. Now this has got a little bit of water in it. I drained the line so it shouldn't be under pressure. There we go. Of course, remember we're going to be using our silicone when we're done the finishing trim. So as soon as you can get that water cleaned off the grout so that it doesn't absorb too much, the better. You want to have that grout line as dry as possible when you go to silicone so that you know it's going to stick. Before you put your fixture on, grab your sand cloth. And just give the edge a quick buff. Okay, if your edges aren't too sharp, it's not gonna wreck your little gasket in here, and it won't hurt your fingers either. And you just force that one on, okay? You wanna just make sure that the name is up and everything looks square. Reach underneath with the Allen key. Find that little spot. Okay, there we go. Remember, these are all plastic parts in there, so don't over tighten. Just make it nice and solid. Here we go. What's that old song? Two out of three ain't bad, but we're not done yet. This is the Rebel Pro two jet shower head. They have a three jet shower head and rain shower head options. And it's just manual control right here, right? You gotta love it. Wow, that's some good looking shower head. Okay, so this particular shower head also comes with the arm and there's a little flange here as well. And this is nice. It comes with a sticker to tell you which direction the water should be flowing which is kind of funny because traditionally the longer piece of pipe does go in the wall and that's kind of normal. So <laughs> it's, it's nice to see I've been doing it right all these years. Okay, and so this is nothing simple. It is <laughs> nothing to this. This flange is really basic and it is just a compression fit. Okay, you just want to wiggle it on and there's little teeth on the back that have been kind of snapped out of the tin and so you put that in there like that. Okay, and you're, you're good to go. Now, hopefully I don't get soaking wet here either. 
Oh yeah, mm. here we go. Well, if you haven't seen the project video and you aren't familiar with these, I buy these at my specialty plumbing store. And this is the same size as this pipe, but it has a little gasket on it. So these are temporary that I put in there. That's a shutoff system. It's also a identification system for installing wallboard and tile. It's exactly the same dimension as my pipe. And so when I install this, I know exactly how to make my cuts. So these tiny little flanges that they come with, when I go and install that, it covers that hole perfectly. No guessing. Love that. Here is my system now for installing the shower arm in your wall. Okay, you want to take your Teflon tape and you just roll it around. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ridiculously ten times around. And I'll tell you why. I'm paranoid. I'm doing a compression fitting inside a wall cavity. And after I turn the water on, if it doesn't work, it'll leak. And no one will know until it makes a big mess on the ceiling downstairs. And because I'm paranoid, I'd like to go a little overboard. I also like to take a little bit of this thread sealer paste and run it up onto the female fitting inside the wall. So now I've got two kinds of seal that are going on in here. There we go. Okay, now here's the secret. Go backwards a little bit until you feel it sit in there. In the, okay. Now this is going to be snug right out of the gate, so it's hard to tell the difference between cross-threaded or just <clears throat> installed brass on brass. Now, you want to fight with this until you get it in there. <clears throat> Perfect. It's exactly nice and tight like I like it. However, it's pointing up at the ceiling, so we have to fix that. So, these shower arms are not made of metal. That won't break, <laughs> so you have to be gentle and careful with this. But I like to get a little extra leverage on this. Instead of holding it here, I like to hold it out here. So I'll put a screwdriver right in through the whole turn and use my hand on the pipe. <sighs> okay, now the shower head, it has little flat pieces on the neck here. That's for a wrench. It's amazing how many people will call and complain that there's a little drip of water coming out of here and going right into their tub, oh my. But it happens. Now inside here, there's a gasket. Okay, so that should work just compression fit, finger tight. All right. So once you think you got it figured tight, reach in behind there, find those little flat sections, give it a couple more turns and try to get it on there as tight as you can. Now, at this point, it should be pretty much sitting on that gasket. And the way you make sure that this is done is you grab your wrench, set it on the flat pieces, okay, and you give it a couple of turns, but make sure you're only grabbing the flat pieces of that shower fixture. All right, so now we've got all of our fixtures installed. It's time to clean up, do all of our silicone, and then we can actually test all of this system. Water's well, automatically going to the tub. Perfect. Okay, we're out of water there, that's good. So that's it for installing your shower trim. If you enjoyed this video, then give it a thumbs up. Ask your questions in the comments below. We'll see you again next time. Don't forget to check us out on Instagram.